Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Garage Gym Experiment Podcast. I'm Adam, back again with Jake, and on tonight's episode, we are covering survey results from last Sunday, primarily about business in your home gym, how you can start it, what you can do. We are going to go through items 7 through 12 on our home gym journey. So Jake will give you his item 7 through 12, and then I'll give you mine. After that, we have a product idea, and then a quick home gym con update. So thanks for listening. Jake. We actually have our first sponsor for the podcast. So this episode is supported by GoRx Fitness. GoRx Fitness helps people like you launch and grow your home gym business. So whether you are looking to do some one-on-one -on -one coaching out of your garage, or you just simply want to rent it out for some extra cash, they're the ones that can help. Join the GoRx Fitness community and start your micro gym journey today. We have added a link in the description of this podcast for you to get in contact with them. So go and check that out. So as Adam mentioned, we're going to start with a few survey results. We have a few to get to before we actually talk about the business of the home gym. Number one, and this one shocked me, but it's simply how likely are you to ask companies to do custom work? Only 6% said hi. Uh, another 15-ish percent said medium, 43% with, went with low, and then 37% basically said no chance, 0%. So in total, we had about 21% saying that they had medium or high interest. We did this survey back in July of 2021, and every all of the low interest ones went up and the high or medium votes went down. So we saw quite a bit, not quite a bit, but considering there's not much in the first place interest, we saw that go down, which was somewhat surprising. Adam, does that, does that, it seems like from what we're seeing on Instagram, more people would have a level, or would have more interest in custom work, but that's not what the data is saying. Does that, does this one surprise you? It actually doesn't. I think most people are getting their necessities in and they have so much that they would like to build and add that to start adding custom jobs when there's so many things out there already aimed for home gym owners that, I don't know, to me, this one doesn't surprise me. Yeah, I'm not surprised that it's low. I'm just surprised that it actually went down. All right, next up, a couple of Black Friday questions. So we asked how many people would be buying gym equipment during Black Friday last week and then also this week? Last week, 55% said yes. And then this week, about 59% went up after seeing the first week of deals. So yeah, so that went up a little bit. And then 17% say that they already have purchased Black Friday deals. Great deals out there this year, don't you think, Jake? Yeah, I don't think... I don't think there's like any insane deals yet, but I do feel like as the month goes along, goes along, there's going to be some really good ones. And I would definitely say they say that they're better than last year already. So like the big companies like participating in deals, like it's been exciting. And they all started like November 1st, which was awesome. Right. Right. It's just going to be like a whole month. Not sure what you're going to get. guess we'll see while we're on it. Adam, do you have... Do you have a favorite deal you've seen so far? I'll just share what I bought. I really wanted a leg extension in the in the basement. And so I, I did get the Titan V2 one. I got it for like $150 off, something like that. Put it together the other day, got on it tonight. It's nice to be able to do that movement again. So Yeah, that one's pretty nice, especially for the cost. It's still more expensive than it was a few years ago, but... Oh, yeah. And I'll but... tell you, like... Titans updates to their padding has been much needed that, I mean, some of the pads on some of their benches and, and other things were just, they were awful and they, they've done so much better, which is nice. Good to hear. All right. We have Trevor and Andrew from GoRx Fitness now on the podcast to help us go through these questions about running a business from your home gym. And it will be really interesting to see what they think of this this feedback so guys thanks for hopping on yeah super excited yeah thanks for having us guys all right number one so what level of interest do you have in running a business from your home gym 
we, we saw that about 6% already do. Another 10% are very interested. 27% are somewhat interested and 56% are not interested. And this kind of, this relates pretty well to what we saw the last time we asked this survey question. So I'm just gonna go on to the next one. And these ones are, I think are a little bit more interesting. But next, what are the biggest objections to running a home gym business? So the number one answer was, I simply don't want the liability. 47% said that. Another 29% said, I wouldn't know where to start. 20% have privacy concerns, so they likely don't want people in and out of the house. And then again, 5% say they don't feel safe, so they don't trust the people that are maybe going into their home gyms. Is this kind of what you guys were thinking you'd see or any shockers here, guys? Yeah, I, dude, I, I would say I'm, I'm, I'm surprised by the overwhelming vote about the liability. I thought it would probably be a little more even between privacy concerns and the liability. That's where I was, if I was gonna bet, I would have expected to see those to be a little more even. But I would say this is pretty encouraging feedback though, because liability can be addressed. You know, if, if you have liability concerns, that can be addressed and there are a number of ways you can do that through insurance and policies you know, the legal protections that you put, you put in place, including starting an LLC, like there are ways that you can address that. You know, privacy concerns, obviously that's something that each individual home gym business has to figure out themselves. Like how do they separate their workplace from their, you know, their personal space? And then not knowing where to start, like we'll tell you where to start. You know, we, we can tell you from step one, step two, step three and four, you know, how to get from, you know, idea to launch and growth. So super, super exciting to see what people's thoughts were on this. I know Trevor had some thoughts too about, you know, the, this specific question, Trevor, if you wanted to share what you were, what we yeah, were talking I was about very before. Surprised. I was very surprised with, with the respondents being half of them saying that liability was there, was there kind of issue here just because we, we do have some of those protections in place already with our, with our personalized policies that we have written up, you know, we've, we've met with lawyers and had them kind of signed off as, as an overview of, of kind of releasing some of that liability already. And so anybody that comes up on the platform is going to have to go through all of those policies. If they don't, if they don't accept them, then, you know, they're, they're not going to be able to reserve time in the gym or reserve one-on-one -on -one training or anything like that. And so from that standpoint, we've kind of addressed that, that liability issue, but then on the other side, yeah, some of the consultation that Andrew and I provide is is going to be, you know, that separate business formation. So you're separating your your personal assets from business at the same time. And then also, you know, we, these commercial policies will cover a very high amount of, of coverage for your equipment, your home, you know, injury, injury or anything like that. And they're a, a very, very reasonable, reasonable fee for those on a monthly basis. So. I was pretty surprised yeah. to see that, but maybe just, you know, the general public doesn't have, doesn't have insight into some of that, some of that, like we do, because we've kind of been diving into this wholeheartedly. Yeah. And then some people might just not want liability at all, you know, that might come up with uh, starting a business, but like Trevor, Tre Trevor hit the nail on the head. You know, we provide templates that people can use in the app. So if they're not comfortable writing policy, this is something that is provided in the app, but I'm actually curious, did you two vote? And I'd be curious to hear where you guys would land on this chart too. Dick, do you vote on these? I mean, you put them. Oh out. yeah. Oh yeah. Average. I always vote. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I won't be able to see I always, the result. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I always vote. Cause I like to see just like, what's, how's it, ten, how's it trending as well. Right. I, I put privacy concerns just because, you know, I've got a, family and it's not necessary for me, it wouldn't necessarily be something that I would want to deal with having my address out there, you know, th those sorts of things. For sure. And I think the data later shows how, how a lot of people, a lot of people just don't know like what to do. So I think like liability is like they're, they just don't know, like 
what you mentioned earlier, like you can, it's actually way more simple than you, you think it would be. So I, I think part of, part of all of these answers are just like, people don't know. So that's just yeah. something to keep in mind. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the, yeah, that's the convenience of the platform too. You know, it's just, it, it allows for us to kind of break down some of those barriers of entry for these individuals. Yeah. Adam, you're going to, you're going to share. I'm curious where you fall. Yeah. I, I mean, I was lucky enough to listen to you guys' podcasts before I voted. So like the liability and stuff, and I, I kind of knew that would be covered like through going like with someone like you, I put, I wouldn't know where to start. Like I looked at my personal situation. And if, if I were to do something like this, I would, I don't want to coach anybody. I like training myself and I'm not interested in coaching anyone else, but I thought it would be cool to like use my space as like another personal trainer studio. How do you go about finding personal trainers and things like that? So that's what I voted for, not knowing where to start. Yeah. Cool. Well, first place is calling your local admin, you know, the town, making sure that you can start a business or run a business like a micro gym from your home gym. So that would be the number one place, but yeah, dude, there are, there are ways to leverage trainers within your, your village or your town to train from your, your home gym. And that's another way to make some passive income with this, but I don't want to harp on this question, but it's interesting to hear your guys' thoughts on that too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next up, I guess this was this. This was kind of what I was speaking to. How familiar are you with the micro gym concept? Did you know a home gym business is a micro micro gym? So 3% said I run a micro gym. So they know. And then another 26% said I've heard or read about it. That's leaving about 71% saying this is my first time hearing about it. So. Yeah, this is, is, this yeah. is actually more in line with what we were thinking. This is. I would have actually guessed a higher percentage of people hadn't heard of micro gym. This is such a niche, you know, word within the fitness space, which is mostly used for, I think we said in the last podcast, CrossFit gyms, F45 spaces, but we crafted this question mostly to introduce the concept, right? To your, to your audience specifically. So the people that responded. So now, however many people responded, they're now aware of this being a thing right? A micro gym, running a business from your home gym as a micro gym is a thing. So this question is revealing, but it was also intended to provide that introduction to the concept. I would imagine that that 4.1% gap between the people that already run home gym businesses and the, and the 2.9% here that, that said, I, I run a micro gym will probably, hopefully now, answer that in the affirmative that they do run a micro gym. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, there's, right. there's, there's also a lot of different businesses you can run from your home gym, right? You two are living proof that you have a business that you use your home gym as the platform and it's not a micro gym. You know, there are other influencers, you know, garage gym life media. I think of him, you know, leveraging his, his home gym as a business, but it's not a micro gym, right? So that could also explain the gap between that 8% and the 2.93% here. Yeah, that's true. Right. All right. What pain points do you see being the most challenging to overcome if you were interested in running a micro gym? So I guess this, 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 I'm not interested shifted a little bit. Mm -hmm. So maybe we lost some people and also like, maybe we gained some people thinking they want we lost people answering the questions, I should say, plus maybe some people are like, oh, maybe, maybe I do want to do a, a micro gym. But anyways, only 36% this time said, I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. The number two response was not having a, enough time. So likely they are out and about, you know, working nine to five elsewhere, have kids, etc. Number two, not knowing how to run a business. And then three, not having enough money. So time was clearly the number one thing here. Yeah. And I honestly, as I looked at, as I look at these results, I think, you know, that, that 20% gap between or difference between the first time we introduced the question and then this time we introduced, I'm not interested as an answer reflects that not having enough time. I think it's actually, I don't know that we've converted anybody from these couple of stories to the idea, 
But what I think we saw or are seeing here is that people that may be interested in it, so they're not somewhat, they didn't fall in the somewhat category, but they may be interested in it if they had enough time, right? So there's a, there's a, there's a good conversation that you can have about not having enough time. I mean, Trevor and I were talking about this before. It's a matter of weighing whether this there's value in it enough for you to make the time for it, right? Is it worth making the time for it? And so that's a question that, you know, we can help answer or, I mean, any one of the four of us in this call, because we all run businesses from, you know, our home gyms, right? So what are the benefits of it? And we could, and there's a conversation around the benefits of running a business from your home gym. And so if you just don't have enough time, I mean, that's a real thing. Like people don't have enough time to do, to take on new projects. But if you see the value and the return on the investment that, that there's potential for, you might say, you know, where can I make the time for something like this? I really like this question. And it was intentional that we asked that I'm not interested in a, or that we put the, I'm not interested back in there as a response to see if there was any difference between that first time we asked and then this time. An attempt yeah, to thought- peak the interest there. Yeah. Yeah, and I thought the order of this survey was beautifully executed. But when I think of not enough time, I think about not being home. So I feel like if I'm renting out my space or if I'm training somebody, I have to be home. And I think a lot of people, you know, they're just not home nine to five. Or like I said earlier, you've got kids, you're running around to practice and school and this and that. So. That's what I think about. No, like consistency, mm-hmm. uh, being home yeah. for a lot of yeah. people, I think. I hear you're probably, you're probably right about that. You know, there are other things that we can, we can, we can say about this slide, right? So not knowing how to run a business, if that's one of your biggest pain points, like this is why GoRx exists because, you know, we're, we're, we're here to, to help you run that business in a, as a partner, not a franchise, but as a partner, because you're an indiv- individual business owner. And they're not having enough money. You know, most people that probably responded to this have committed, you know, hundreds to thousands of dollars to their home gym. But if you don't have a lot of equipment, you don't have to buy like a decked out home gym to start a micro gym, right? You could throw mats on the ground and start, you know, training, you know, MMA or jujitsu. You know what I mean? Like there's, there are ways to, to start and enter this space without dropping thousands of dollars, you know, to, to run a micro gym. So uh, if you're one of those individuals that's interested, but you don't think that you have enough money, hit us up because we've got lots of ideas. Awesome. Next up, what would you need the most help figuring out if you decided to start a micro gym? The number one answer (laughs) was easily policies slash insurance with 54% saying that number two, Another paperwork thing, business formation slash compliance, 23%, marketing slash branding, 16 and a half, and then tech slash software, 7%. Mm, yeah. This, this I, one didn't I was really surprise me. Yeah. Did, were you guys surprised by this? I was surprised mm. by how like yeah. soundly that uh, policies insurance defeated all these other, <laughs> you know, answers that were available. Yeah, th- this question seems very similar to the one that we talked about earlier with people having the most concerns with uh, the liability stuff. Well, here you go, insurance right there. Yeah, I mean, my vote landed with how do you get started? So marketing, branding, but. Yeah, yeah. You know, that answer, you know, the, the first time we asked, what's the biggest objection? So liability, you know, this might reveal that people just don't know how to manage liability, right? So. It may not be that people are not willing to take some risk, you know, relatively the risk is very low to run a business, you know, gym business It's very, it's very low, but you know, it might just be that people don't know how to manage risk. Right. And so the conversation then changes. Okay. So how do you manage risk? What, what are the, what are the things that you can do to manage the risk? And so that's, that's where like we come into play, you know, we help you manage that risk and, you know, we do that by building a platform that, you know, has built in policies and, and, and layers to provide that liability protection. But, and then we're, you know, side note, Trevor and I are working on par- landing a partnership with an insurance company to help streamline that process and make it even that much more easy to navigate 
But if it's a if it's conversation about risk, it's it's just a matter of managing that risk and how do you manage that risk. So obviously there could be follow up surveys and questions that we di- di- you know dig a little deeper to actually get to the root of what people are thinking. But if I had to guess, that's sort of where my head would would be at in in thinking on this subject. Yep. There are plenty of areas to, to mitigate some of that, uh, you know, some of that risk that's involved with those policies and insurance and everything. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, so with, with any kind of partnership that we can set up for, for insurance, it would make, we can make it that much faster to get the insurance and be covered. And we can help people, you know, get the different levels of insurance that they would need for their home, for their, for their equipment right. and for any injury that takes place. And so, yeah. Yeah, having having that layer of of protection from the policies to the insurance to then maybe the LLC formation, you know, all of that stuff will will help play into that protection from those those different risks that people might see. Yeah, absolutely. All right, moving on. What services would or do you offer if you decided to run a micro gym? This one was relatively close with one on one coaching receiving about 46% of the votes and then just open gym slash rack time, 37%, only 10% said small group classes or sessions and then 7% said other. So this one makes sense with uh, the amount of space most garages or basements are. Yes. Yeah. And it can also be a reflection of, of your audience specifically, right? You might have more power lifters, you might have more bodybuilders. I don't necessarily know the demographics of, you know, of your audience, obviously. And so this might be bias based off of that, but you know, this is actually not surprising results. So this is more or less sort of where our thinking was that the results would land, you know, but I I do want to say the money in training from the private space is actually made in small group sessions and semi-private lessons. So if you have a space that can fit three to four people, that's actually where you're going to be able to make the most money is by charging 25, 35 or $50 a class, right? You know, for that semi-private training, whereas you might be charging 50, 65 or a little bit more for your personal training and one-on-one. So it doesn't fall in line with what we're thinking, but certainly if you're one that can, I would consider moving into that space too, like the small group fitness classes, you know, an open gym rack time, this, this take requires a little more effort, you know, for that micro gym owner to, to reach their neighborhood and, you know, local people to get them inside their gym. So if you're, if you're just a solely rack time person, it's going to take a little more effort to get traffic through your doors, but obviously as GARX fitness grows and, you know, Trevor's spoken to this. In previous podcasts, it's that network effect will, you know, compound itself. So as we grow and we grow user base and, and micro gyms, you know, that open gym rack time will actually become, you know, a much more viable and a much easier service to offer and attract clients. Yeah, hey, it could be that, you know, kind of side income from your micro gym is, is the, you know, the traveling the traveling guests and stuff like that mm-hmm. and, and people like that that come in and what's funny is you know with this small group classes and everything i when i tend to think about micro gym business i think of it as a you know a fitness based business with with weights and racks and and all that stuff and and uh, but when i think about kind of how i grew up and and with wrestling i mean we had a wrestling mat in our garage and i've been i had been wrestling in in the garage with uh, with other kids from the team and from the club you know, since I was probably six or seven years old in, in that garage. And that was the only, we never parked our cars in the garage. It was always just the wrestling mat, a couple, you know, pull up towers and, and, and a treadmill. And so it's really funny to think of now when I, when I kind of turn my mind to what a garage gym is, I think of it as, you know, a fitness space and everything, but there's so many, there's such a plethora of, of options you can use, you know, for fitness inside of a, inside of an open space like that. Awesome. Well, I actually have, I have three notes. Let me, let me, Send it. let me, let me try and get all of these without consulting them. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So number one, so our, our audience is definitely a very good mix of bodybuilding, powerlifting, CrossFit. And I would say like those three make up, you know, 
80 ish percent of the audience answering there's not a lot of like booty class type <laughs> group class people you know there's not a lot of people going into those sorts of gyms obviously so yeah th i guess i think your point there about the audience definitely makes sense number two is over the years i've definitely seen the small group classes within specific garage gyms and they look like they are flourishing and they have a really tight-knit community yes and they have a lot of fun so i would say like awesome businesses there if you have like a good open space that like doesn't uh, affect your neighbors and you have the freedom to do that awesome opportunity there and then the third one is a product suggestion for your app so specifically for open gym slash rack time i think a lot of a lot of people who are and this kind of goes with the like home gym con idea as well a lot of people want to try something like they want to actually have it in their hands before they go out and buy like an 800 dollar specialty bar yeah so something that you could do with your own individual listing is showcase individual pieces of equipment and then somebody could actually go in search the app to see if anybody in their area has that bar or has those dumbbells has etc if i wanted to try power block dumbbells before i went out and spent a thousand dollars on them if somebody Dude, had them in the area and they were brilliant. yeah, yeah it's brilliant. um so i think that would be huge yeah, yeah. Um, it's going on the roadmap, bro. I can't yeah, believe I haven't thought of it. That that'd is be a great, yeah. great suggestion, man. Great su yeah. suggestion. Yeah, we, we have, you can see what people's equipment, like a gym can list the equipment they have, but right now you can't, you can't search for a piece of equipment. But dude, <laughs> yeah, that's going on the roadmap. Yeah, nice. right. So, that, dude, that actually dude. might add a lot yeah. of like, just people who are like, who are on the fence, but if they have the ability to, like just say you can come over by for 15 minutes check out this bar yeah it's 10 bucks uh, you know it helps them yeah recoup the investment yeah um, yep. me like-minded folks people like if you own a mark a mars bar that's 800 dollars. you're likely going to meet a like-minded person so <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah great point great point. yeah that is a great point and i mean you know it might even be worth it for manufacturers and stuff to reach out to some of these more popular gyms that right, end up being right. on the app mm -hmm. or even reaching out to us and saying, Hey, let's cut a deal with, with GoRx affiliates to, you know, get these gyms and get these, you know, get this piece of equipment in these gyms so that they can, they can even, you know, get feedback or, or kind of get some of that consumer, consumer data from that standpoint yeah. too. Yeah. Great idea. Cool. All right. A few right. more questions. Uh, and this, so, so this is something we typically ask once or twice a year. And the answers do pretty much align with what we're seeing. So I'll just run through this one. So where in your home gym slash property, would you run a home gym business? About two thirds are saying garage, 16% basement, 17% detached building slash structure. And then only about less than a half percent say outdoors. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would think that's mostly having to do with the fact that I, I don't have that to support this, but my bet is most Home gym, home gym owners live in suburbs and suburbs have lots of garages. So that would be my guess, which is why we're seeing overwhelming home gyms in garage spaces. Yeah. And also just keep in mind, most of these people answering the question are guys between the ages of like 28 and 40. So, okay. Fair. Yeah, suburbs. I, I wasn't aware of that. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. Suburbs area. <laughs> It's, it's probably about 80, 20 answering these questions. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. And then 99% dudes listening to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so that makes, yeah. All the females, um, all the females out there listening to their truth. Yeah. <laughs> Jake, 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 there, Jake's wife few. and Adam's wife. There you go. No, my wife does not listen to me. I don't think. <laughs> All right. If you were running a micro gym, who would your ideal guest slash clients be this one? So you, you could either choose between your friends and friends of friends, people in the neighborhood slash community, and then tourists or people 
passing through. Friends and friends, or friends and friends of friends was the number one answer. This probably goes along with liability and those sorts of things. You can actually trust your friends a little more. So 54% said that, 41% said people in the neighborhood or community, and then only 5% said people passing through. Yeah. We, so th this question was mostly to get at people's appetite for like the Airbnb concept, you know, at least with the, with your, your audience. So with this, with this one, one thing that this tells us is that people are not, that are interested in this or engaging in this survey are not necessarily interested in, do, you know, running their home gym, like an Airbnb, you know, maybe an aspect of that business will incorporate open gym and rack time and, and cater to that demographic of people. But most people want to be immersed in their community and serve their community. And, and that is very much in line with, you know, the whole micro gym movement in, in, in of itself, but also GoRx Fitness as our, as our mission, right? Our mission is to empower people through fitness and community, right? And so that aligns very well with where our thinking is what we've expected, but also what we're trying to achieve. Awesome. Yeah. So that, that's the last question. I thought of one more too, that we can ask next week. Um, and I'll ask you guys the best way to phrase this, but I'm thinking something like if you were to start a micro gym, what do you think the number one perk would be? So would it be the tax write-offs? Would it be the extra cash? Would it be, you know, living your dream as a trainer, whatever? That's a great uh, so question. Try and, try and, we can try and think of a good way to phrase that. Yeah, it's a great dude. I'll, we can workshop with you. Working the yeah, chat it's today, so, yeah. It puts that, <laughs> yeah. uh, puts that yeah. inspiration out there for people too. And they, yeah, yeah. Sure. they think of the, yeah. the end goal of it instead of, you know, some of those barriers that might be in front of them. Yeah. Right. There are a lot of perks. There are a lot of perks. Cool. Well, before you guys hop off, anything else you want to, anything else stand out or anything else you want to want to say? I mean, no, thanks for having us on, man. Thanks for, you know, allowing us to sponsor the survey. It's had a great time, had a great time crafting it. Really excited about the, the results. I think it speaks volumes to people's interest in, you know, monetizing their home gym. We've spent thousands of dollars in some, some cases, thousands of dollars in, on our space. And so we want to recoup some of that, that cost back. So yeah, anyway, thank you. Really yeah. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so sure. much for letting us be a part of this and, and, you know, even interviewing us on the previous podcast and everything. Yeah. It's been, it's been, uh, we've gotten really good support from, from the people that, that listen to it and, and have gotten really good feedback. So cool. yeah. we really appreciate yeah. it. And Adam, dude, it's a pleasure to meet you, man. Yeah. yeah. Hey, nice to meet you guys. Yeah, definitely. All right. So we'll right. see you guys. Take care. All right. Let's move on to the next six items. So a couple of weeks ago, Adam and I shared how we would likely start our home gyms. If we were to do it again, I took more of a buy once cry once approach, whereas Adam's going with more of a budget list. So I'll quickly go over my first six and then, and then my next six, we will both blog about this here soon, but yeah, let us know what you think. So number one, I started with a rogue Ohio bar. Number two, just some basic black bumper plates. I went with the cheapest option I could find stall mats for some flooring rep PR 5,000. Then I went with the rep AB 5,200 and then the echo bike for some cardio. All right. And then seven through 12, I have to say this was really hard. And I definitely changed my answers multiple times and like could have gone with a completely different six, but this is what I went with. So number seven, get some dumbbells. I went with the space saving new bells. They're, they're my go-to dumbbells. Number eight rep slash lat rep lat slash low row attachment. Honestly, I'd probably just go with the plate loaded one to save some money, but this would pair well with my rep PR 5,000 rack. And I would save some space by not adding it as a standalone. Number nine, I would actually add some more plates. I'm going to go strength co plates, get some iron. It's kind of nice to, to have additional plates to help when you have something like a lat slash low row attachment. 
or you have, you just want to superset your workouts, or maybe you have multiple people working out at the same time. So I went with some iron plates. I think strength though are probably, probably the best options out there for most people who want just a solid pair. Number 10. So it should be a rogue Ohio power bar. So I went with multiple bars, the multiple bars route. So I just, this is my go-to bar. You know, I chose the Ohio bar at the top because it's a little more versatile, but I actually find myself using power bar way more often. So I went with the rogue Ohio power bar. You can't beat it. It's an awesome bar. I would, I'd upgrade to the stainless steel if I could as well. Number 11, I'm going to go with the specialty bar that I use the most, and that's the Cadillac bar. There are some more budget-friendly multi-grip bars like the Titan one and Rep, but I actually think the Cadillac bar is worth the upgrade if you can afford it. And in this pretend world, I can afford it. <laughs> Number 12, I'm going to go with another specialty bar and, uh, I'll go with the Rep open trap bar. So I got that in a few weeks ago and it's a really solid bar. I think it is a little bit wide, but the handles are a little wide, but with the upgraded handles coming soon, I think that should solve all the problems. I think I'll find myself using that more than the Kabuki open trap bar. It's a little more balanced and yeah. So, and it's, and it was cheaper. So that was kind of the, the tiebreaker there. I went more expensive on the Cadillac bar. I'll go a little cheaper on the open trap bar. So, so basically my setup is bar heavy and i think that my next my next one i'll have to get some storage for those bars but i went especially bar heavy through the first 12. all right adam thoughts or you can just go oh jake you got a sick gym and it's right? funny because like <laughs> the items in your gym match what's in your gym and the items in my gym pretty much match what's in my gym there are a couple things that are different in mine and like you obviously have like so much to pick from like from your gym but yeah. Right. And oh. I, yeah, I, I would say a good, a, that's a good point. I have a lot of other stuff in this gym too. And this is basically the stuff I find myself using the most. So, right. Yeah. It makes sense. And that's kind of where, what my list turned into as well. For six, you know, you got to get bar and bumper plates. So I went uh boneyard Ohio bar. I got those black bumper plates, same ones you got to keep it inexpensive, especially with plates well, with the rep PR 1100, kind of like that one right over my shoulder. The Rep AB3000 bench, like the one that my camera's sitting on right now. Some Titan Olympic rings, because I think Olympic rings are very underrated. And then the 1000 series lat low row, because you need some cables in your life at that point. You can get a lot done with that. So 7 through 12 was very difficult. I want to go ahead and preface yep. this by saying that my number 7 <laughs> is going to have to be more bumper plates if you don't have enough to, match out, like, to max out with. Okay? But I'm pretending that you do. So... My number seven, that's where I threw in some stall mats. And I'm just going to say enough to cover the areas that you're lifting on. In an ideal world, you want to fill up your whole space. It feels good. It looks good. But in my budget world, maybe just two that you're going to be uh, doing some mm. deadlifts and stuff like that on. Okay. Number eight, it's time to get some dumbbells, adjustable dumbbells, if you have to go that route, especially in the budget world. So... I was thinking something, I love the way like Pepin dumbbells look. They look like as they're all loaded down, like a commercial gym, powerlifting, big heavy dumbbell. So I love that look, but their five through 50 set is not that much more inexpensive than like a new Bell's five to 80. So I had to put new Bell's yep. up there too. New Bell's are $745. They can change so fast, changing Pepin's take some time and there's some friction there. So it's not, not the easiest. So I had to put new bells up there as well. So I'd probably go new bells, but if you're trying to cut all the costs you can, you can do something like a Pepin. Uh, number nine, I don't like doing just barbell stuff for legs. And so I threw on just a single monkey feet attachment for those dumbbells. I don't know, Jake, can you use Pepe or new bells with a monkey foot. I've used new bells at your place, but I use my monkey feet at my place with my non-adjustables. So you can have to check that out to see if it works. 
but to be able to strap a dumbbell to your foot to do leg extensions, <laughs> kickbacks, leg curls. I think monkey feet are nice. They're right now. I don't know if it's a sale because of um, Black Friday or anything like that, but it's like 75 bucks for one. And there's not a situation, I don't think, where you're going to want to strap two of those to your feet. You only need one. Okay. That's my number nine. Number 10, I want a functional tower. I just said the one from Bells. I haven't personally put my hand on it, but I have put my hand on the Titan functional tower and I don't like it. There's too much friction in the cables as you pull it. I use it for some stuff, but again, it's not my favorite. So even though I haven't touched the Bells tower, I put that one on here. It's like just north of $300. So plate loaded. Number 11, I picked an SSB bar. I don't have an SSB bar, but using them, it, you're, you're going to want to have one in your space eventually. It's it's on my short list of things to add. So uh, the rep SSB Black Friday just ended for them. Their little video game thing it was. Still go with the rep one. Rep's an easy to still, over on this one. Yes. All right. I'm going to go with Jake SSB on that is one. is awesome. Yeah. All right. Easy. All right. It's going to be the rep SSB then. Don't worry, Titan. I got you at number 12. I want a rackable curl bar. Finally, we went over this before. Why, why you should go rackable curl bar instead of like your short, easy curl bar. The price difference is it's tiny. I mean, it's like, especially in the Titan world, I think it's only like $25, $30. Get a rackable curl bar. Titan one's fine. It's Chrome. It's surprisingly good knurling for Chrome. And so I want a rackable curl bar for number 12. So there you have it. My seven through 12. Awesome. I like it. Sweet. It might change by the time we, we blog this, Jake. <laughs> something, something might pop in. I know. Head. I feel like, I, yeah, I feel like I need to stick to this, but it would be, I almost went with like a landmine. Oh, I almost yeah. like, I just got the clever Atlas. I almost went with that, that with the landmine. Like, yeah, because was, you did get was a oh, tough decision because you got the tower like I do. So basically, since we said we got the tower, we're, we're using the cheap single bar attachments. Yes. Oh, I, yeah, I, I almost added some nice attachments here, but I, I was kind of thinking wait a little bit Love longer. It. Yeah. And that, that'll, some nice attachments will probably come on 13 to 18 yeah. for me. Same. All right. Look out for those blogs. All right, product idea. Hey, can I Another jump in before, before we start this product idea? I, I did a product idea two weeks ago, right? And I wanted the, the dumbbell slot things that you can like screw in for like a DIY yep. dumbbell storage. Wouldn't you know it, Jake, one of our listeners DM me with the Amazon link to the are you serious uh, i am i'm i am very serious echoes basement you know eric friend of the mm -hmm. show yes he sent me the link best portable is the company name five piece dumbbell rack dumbbell weight rack holder set for like eight bucks you get five oh and so did you get some well, no, because I forgot my Amazon password because it's on my computer, but it's not saved on my phone. <laughs> but I will be getting some $85. I can fill up my five to 75s and get them screwed in. So Eric, appreciate you, man. That was awesome. Thanks, Eccles. All right. So these pictures make l very little sense. You have to actually listen to my words. Okay. Um, Got it. So this, this product suggestion is based off of me you know like kyle adding his his little addition to the jammer arms to make them a little more adjustable you got you have like vendetta so engine and then just like thinking about how outside of that like jammer arms just really they were they went through like a hype phase and then i think the the hype fell really quickly after you like figure out you know how difficult they are to maneuver around and you might not you have they're expensive and you might not use them as as much as you had like you you wanted to yeah and then you, they just sit there so i think a lot of that hype is gone but it might be coming back a little bit with some of these like inventions and the potential to like morph these in inventions 
and make it like a all like loaded up jammer arm, you know, just like, you know, I know, you know what I'm saying, Adam. I'm following. So, yes. So my suggestion is basically height adjustable jammer arms. So what I'm thinking is you, you have the ability to change the actual length of the jammer arm. So, so when you get a standard jammer arm, it's really long, takes up a lot of space. And you know, it's bulky when you're moving it. So I think the ability to have two different size arms that you could slide into each other, which to ultimately make it a full size or like three quarters or half size, there's some potential. So if, if you think about like a, like on the screen, you can see a squirt gun where you just open and close. And that's kind of how I think, but like with racks. And then you would use something like on the screen, you can see the rogue monster knob to tighten them once you change the actual sizes. But, and, and then, so one, one, this idea also came from me using the jammer arms when Kyle came over and like the bottom just like kept hitting my arm when I was trying to do cleans. And so, so I thought just like, if they were a little bit smaller, it might work. And then you see like Matty Russo, the muscle wizard, he like actually cut his down. So they're much easier from the, to like maneuver around. He has the ability to like, you see on the thing, he added a, a, a pad where you can do like stuff. Like, it, it turns in basically a bulldog pad. He, he uses it for a seat. There's a number of things that he uses it for. And it looks like when he's using it, it's just much more fluid. So. So some benefits, it's better for those with tight space. So you can, if you have a, a wide or a long enough inside of your rack. So if you have maybe a 43 inch interior rack, you might be able to use them actually on the inside of your rack. When you're not using them, it's less space to store it, to store them. It's just easier to maneuver around. They're not quite as long. You can be a little bit more efficient with your movements. So you know, you're, you're not wheeling around this huge thing. And then like, like I said earlier, it can double as something like a bulldog pad or a lat seat if you have a pad. So those sorts of things. I think the big questions here. So how secure would it be? Like, you know, you have two different post sizes. There's going to be some wiggle. So how tight can you really get that knob? Can you really lock it into place or are you going to have to tighten it every once in a while? that might be getting annoying. Some other questions like, would you, you'd have to like figure out the attachments. Like, could you use the same for the top and bottom? If they were slightly different sizes, you, you would likely, if you saw the, the post that we did with Kyle and he forgot his handles, we ended up grabbing the Peppins and you could like screw it in. So stuff like that you could probably do because it's more it's not as you can actually choose the size of the width. So you likely need some sort of things like that. How much additional cost does that add? First of all, Adam, am I making sense? Yes. Okay. So here's where I'm at. I'm thinking it's gotta be two or I'm sorry, three by three to fit like all your rack attachments, right? No doubt. No doubt. Yeah. So the, the top shorter part of it would just be a sleeve where the extension comes out of, and that extension would be three by three with one inch holes. And then to secure it in, I'm not thinking mm -hmm. of like a screw in bolt. I'm thinking of your, your spring bolt that you like adjust like uh, seats and stuff like, um, like with commercial equipment. So like you pull out the spring, you adjust it, you put it back in and then you screw it tight. Something like that where you pull it, yeah. slide it out, screw it in afterwards and secure it in no problem. So that's what I started picturing right away. Mm, I like that. Yeah. That's a good thought. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and rate it real quick. I love the idea, especially like I'm thinking of you and Kyle working out together. You're, you're two very different sizes. So if you're doing like an incline press, right, it's set up for Kyle. Well, it's not going to be set up for you at all. To be able to slide that up and down and like basically be an mm -hmm. adjustable machine for you would be awesome. I think the idea is definitely worth like a seven seven and a half maybe i really like it the only reason think, it's not like yeah. an eight or nine is because i don't like jam arms but <laughs> right 
I think it's a really good idea. Yeah, that's a good point. And I'm thinking about even with like the nice trolley system that Rogue has, where it really is pretty easy to, to maneuver. But once you have like weight on it, you either have to take the weight off or you have to like really bustle down to like even lift it a, a couple notches for like, if you have multiple people. Yeah. And that's what like Kyle and I had to keep doing. You had to like, kind of like maneuver it. So yeah, that might be a good way to, to like help with the actual workouts if you're doing it with a few different people. You know, I have no idea how many people like are listening to these ideas, but I'm sure someone could, I know Kyle is, so maybe he'll say something. We'll Kyle, see. Are you listening? Let us Cam, know, Kyle. Cameron Britton, are you listening? Yeah, start manufacturing some stuff. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, I and then I, I actually asked Maddie, like, can you remind me what the benefits you see when you're using it? And he just he just like emphasized that it was just easier to use. Yeah. Just simpler. So yeah, I see some potential here. And like it would be cool, like we said, like jammer arms on their own, expensive might not use them in too too much. Like, honestly, I wasn't using them much. And then I sold mine to Kyle, I think, or whatever. We made a deal or something, but I, I was like, all right, yeah, have them. <laughs> I'm not using them. They just, I put my Jacobs on them. I use them like a rack. Yeah. And which, yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. But anyways, I think with all of these, with Britain and Kyle and people thinking about using jammer arms in a different way. Ultimately, I think there is potential to make some really cool devices. Well, yeah. And Pendergraph was saying like when he was originally buying his, like with Rogue, you have to choose if you want these, like, he was like, everyone wants to buy the really long ones. Don't buy the short ones. Well, what if you didn't have to make that choice? What if you, you, you buy them and it extends and, and shortens, right? Right. Oh right. man. Million dollar idea. I'm, I'm telling you, someone, someone's going to run with it. Make your money. All right. Sorry. That was good, Jake. Right. I like that one. Thank you. All right. And then finally, a quick home gym con update. So we didn't add too many vendors, but Juggernaut AI did commit to being the official training app of home gym con. So Chad and whoever he decides to bring will be there and he is supporting home gym con. We greatly appreciate you, Chad and team. Chad's also probably going to do a seminar somewhere at the convention, which is really cool. Do you know really anything cool. about and lifting, it, Jake? Good question. Uh, good question. We might have to teach him some stuff. I'm pretty strong, so maybe I could show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but like, that's an awesome get. Like, awesome. One of the best power lifters ever. Yeah. One of the best entrepreneurs in the space. Really cool to have him down in French Lick. I think last, last week we said we had nine total vendors. Now I think there's a few on the fence still, and a lot of people are really focused on their black Friday sales. So it's probably not the best time to be doing a lot of outreach, but I think we did add three last week. So just to run down the list again, we have ab mat, swing sesh, bells of steel, surplus strength. All of those have at least a 30 by 10 booth. So they're likely going to bring it. Juggernaut, Bridge Belt, who just like continues to create new cool stuff and post it on Instagram week after week. So it feels like they're in one of their like, they were innovating the past year or two or three, and they're bringing some cool stuff. Black Widow, so Dean is a huge git. He makes some of the some of the most awesome custom pieces of equipment you'll find. He's coming all the way from Manhattan. They got it wrong again. Or it's no, Long no, 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 not, not Manhattan, Long Island. So that's going to be really cool. So we have like larger companies and we have smaller companies who are going to bring real custom stuff. Really cool. Ex executive Fit, bring those deadlift platforms and other custom work. Freedom Fitness Equipment, Ashton, Belt Fed Strength. We'll be bringing those cool belts. Sorry about the, the custom survey data earlier, but those belts will be really cool to see. And then micro gains and then go RX fitness, um, who we just chatted with will be there. Awesome. And Jake, that's going to be do there? it. I'm going to be there. 
Dude, if you're going, I'm going. <laughs> All right, well, that's going to do it for us. Did you like tonight's episode? Well, then be sure to keep your eye out for new episode releases wherever you listen to your podcasts. Stay involved on our social media sites by following Garage Gym Experiment and taking part in our Sunday surveys on Instagram so that you too can be a part of these conversations. Like, follow, subscribe to the channel on YouTube. Get involved in our website for all your home gym content needs. I'm going to add one, Jake. Stay up to date with Home Gym Con by following Home Gym Con on Instagram. And that's going to do it. So, Jake, anything else left for the listeners? Nope. You got nope. it. All right, guys. See you next time.